families that are uh, in a predicament now, I just need you to know that we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly, above and abundantly, anything we think or ask. Try Jesus. He has everything that we need. Let us pray. Father of all life, we thank you for another day. Lord, a day that we've never seen before and a day that we shall never see again. We thank you, Lord, that you have brought us from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. We thank you, Lord, and we have seen and unseen dangers all around us. But you allow and afford us protection, Lord. You are our shield and our buckler, and you continuously make ways out of no way. God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you for our families far and near. Thank you for being a righteous God, a God who neither slumbers nor sleeps. So, Father, right now as we go into our study, open our hearts and our minds that we might be receptive of your word. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen, and amen. As we look this morning at Psalm 26, we are ready to begin. Uh, we are sharing with you the first few verses, and it reads as such. Judge me, O Lord. For I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. Therefore, I shall not slump. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evil doers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash mine hands in innocency, so will I compass thine altar. O Lord, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works, of all thy wondrous works. You see, here in this, particular psalm, David appeals to God by touching his integrity. David says that we are complete in him. The man that walks in this integrity, yet trusting wholly in the grace of God, is in a state of acceptance according to the covenant of which Jesus was the mediator in virtue of his spotless obedience even unto death. This man desires to have his inmost soul searched and proved by the Lord. He is aware of the deceitfulness of his own heart. He desires to detect and mortify every sin and he longs to be satisfied of his being a true believer and to practice the holy commands of God. Let us read on verse 8. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor Dweller. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, 
in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me to be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place. In the congregations will I bless the Lord. Now, great care is to provide or to avoid bad company. He starts out by letting us know, judge me, Lord. Examine me, Lord. I have not sat in vain person, with vain person. I have hated the congregation of evil doers. He's saying that, you know, these things he did not like. But he's saying, Lord, I did in verse 8, I did love the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. It says, gather my souls with the sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hand is mischief, and their right hand full of bribes. You see, great care is given to avoid, as I said, this bad company. It is both evidence of his integrity and a good means to keep us in it. He feels that his ground is firm under him, and he delights in blessing the Lord with his congregation on earth. He trusts that surely he shall join the great assembly in heaven in singing praises to his God and to the Lamb forevermore. Amen. It lets us know when we refer to and talk about the church, the church, uh, we know that the church is really within us. Amen? We are the church. Amen? And the New Testament specifically tells us and spells out how we become the church. Because if we look over in 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, verse 19, when we speak of the church, it says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. If the church was the physical building, and in the Old Testament, it alludes more that the church is in the physical is, is in the physical building. But when Jesus Christ, we learn later, comes on the scene, he allows us to know that the church is within us. We are the church. Because if we have the physical building and no one shows up, it's just the building. But the church remains in each and every one of us. Let us look at Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This 27th Psalm is known and recorded by many. Many rejoice in it. Many talk about this 27th Psalm. And many people are encouraged and inspired when they refer to it. Uh, it it's letting us know that he's our light and our salvation. That the Lord, who is the believer's light, is the strength of his life. Not only by whom, but in whom, he lives and moves. Then it says in verse 2, When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host 
should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in time, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. As I said, this Psalm 27, it is a song that is designed to, uh, uh, to, to slay that dragon in our lives. It is something that is designed to keep us in the midst of our trials and tribulations. This 27th Psalm is inspired to help us to be able to go through any and every situation that we will encounter. You see, fear is one of life's most paralyzing problems. We all have a certain amount of fear. And this is where, as we study God's word, our faith will come in. And faith will conquer our fear. We fear the known. Sometimes we even fear the unknown. But if this psalm is helping us to keep our heads straight, to keep us cool in the midst of our struggles. David is giving us here some practical ways in which we can face our fears. And now as we look at verses 7 through 14, it's telling us, Hear, O Lord, when I cry. With my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou said it, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. You see, during this particular part and portion, we learn that all of God's children desire to dwell in their father's house. As it told us, one thing I have desired is to remain in the household of faith. Uh, so to not sojourn there is wayfaring to man. It, it, it's mind boggling. But to tarry but a night or to dwell there for a time only as a servant that abides not in the house forever. Our desire is to be in God's house. In the church, we are the church, but we are to forget not the assembly of the body of Christ. So our desire is that we should tarry, we should forever want to be in the household of faith. And it says, uh, do we hope that the praising of God will be the blessedness of, for, of our eternity? Surely we ought to make it our business and our time to praise and glorify our God. We look at the words and we say to seek. We learn, first of all, that the believer, wherever the believer is, he can find a way to the throne of grace by prayer. We can always find our way to the Lord through prayer. Now, God calls us, and there are four ways, so I want you this morning to write down the four ways that uh, God calls us. Number one, 
God calls us by his spirit. He calls us by his spirit. God calls us by his word. He calls us by his word. Number three, God calls us by his worship. That's why we should always remember to worship the, the, the uh, will of God. Worship him in spirit and in truth. And fourth, God calls us by special providences. God calls us by special providences. Merciful and afflicted. This call is general. The call that he's giving us, as we can see in verse 8, it says, Seek ye my face. But we must apply it to ourselves. We must make it personal and say, I will seek it. Lord, I'm going to seek you while you might yet be found. The word does us no good when we do not ourselves accept the exhortation a gracious heart readily answers to a call of a gracious God. A gracious heart answers to the call of a gracious God. The psalmist requests here the favor of the Lord the continuance of his presence with him, the benefit of the divine guidance and the benefit, praise God, of divine protection. Let's look at what it says. Hide not thy face, verse 9, far from me. Put not thy servant uh, I'm sorry, let's start with verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. He's asking God to hear my, my cry. Hear my voice, God. Have mercy upon me. And then, God, I need you to answer me. And then when it says, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, Will I seek? Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. And here is a very familiar verse that's coming. Because we've said that in our time of mourning or grieving the loss of our parents. How many of us have said, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. It is saying that when we lose our parents, when we lose a father or we lose a mother, we can still be confident and we can still be encouraged to know that it is now the Lord who will step in and he'll be that father to the fatherless. He'll be a mother to the motherless. And then we ask the question in verse 11. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. This verse when it says teach me, and over and over in scriptures we will hear the words teach me, O Lord, teach me. Teach me thy statutes. Teach me thy commandments. Teach me thy ways. We need to take heed to that because we know that the Holy Spirit is the teacher. He is the comforter and the teacher. And when we ask God for leadership, for direction, for guidance, the teacher will come in and he will lead us in the plain path because uh, he is our God. Verse 12 says, deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. 
Verse 13 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. All of us this morning, we all know that waiting and waiting to get our prayers answered, waiting to hear from the Lord, waiting for a response, waiting for anything, uh, it, it's hard. It, it becomes hard to do. But it is often the time that we draw the closest to God. If we trust in him and if we have confidence to know that God is going to bring us out, then we learn to wait on him. While we're waiting, uh, we're going to learn that Psalm 37 says, while we're waiting, uh, you know, we, 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 we have to learn, rather, that the scripture tells us to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Uh, it's telling us that if we are in good courage, then the Lord will strengthen our heart. If we're in good courage, we're going to continue to pray and seek him. We're going to depend on him. We're going to rely on the Lord. Lord, we're just waiting on you. So when we wait, yes, it's hard. When we wait, yes, it's our time of reflecting and growing closer to the God of our salvation. Psalm 28, as we go to this morning, Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief in their hearts. It says, give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render to them des their des desert, uh, their desert. And so it says to us here, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. You see, here, David is asking God, and David is praying. Because he said, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Don't be silent. But he's asking God in verse 2 to hear my, the voice of my supplication. Amen. So these are the things that David is asking God for. If you would write, these are the things that David is asking God for. David asked God, number one, that he should not be numbered with the wicked. That he should not be numbered with the wicked. Secondly, David asked God to not to be entangled in the snares that they have laid for him. To not be entangled in the snares that they have laid for him. Three, David is asking God to save him from being infected with their sin. He doesn't want to have that uh, in him or on him or around him. So save him from being infected with their sin. And fourth, David is asking God to save him from doing what the other sinners do. To save him from doing what the other sinners do. 
David is very earnest in his prayer here. His, he observes his faith in prayer and he prays constantly. He reminds God that God is his rock and whom he can build his hope. He tells him that believers, as believers, we know that we should not rest until we are sure that God is hearing our prayer and our call. That we should all pray honestly to God for his grace to keep us and for his mercy to help us. As we look and conclude with verses 6 through 9, it says, Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Verse 9, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. In these verses 6 through 9, uh, God has heard the supplication. And David is saying, let us then bless the name of the Lord. The Lord is my strength to support me. The Lord will carry me through all of my services and my sufferings. And so when we think about what can we do, does the Lord hear us? I want you to know that there are two things that we can expect from just believing in God. We can expect the joy that God gives us and the peace which surpasseth all understanding. So what can we expect from believing God and taking God at his word? We can expect joy and peace. I want you to know that the psalmist concludes with a short but comprehensive prayer. God's people are his inheritance and precious in his eyes. He prays that God would save them, that God would bless them, especially in the plenty of his ordinances, which are food to the soul. Direct their actions and overrule their affairs for good. Also, he's asking that they be lifted up forever. Not only those of that age, but his people in every age yet to come. Verse 9 again, save thy people and bless mine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever and lift them up forever. Amen. Save us, Lord Jesus, from our sins and bless us, thou son of Abraham, with the blessings of righteousness. Feed us, thy good shepherd of the sheep, and lift us up forever from the dust. O thou who are the resurrection and the life. David is talking, and when he's talking, he's talking with expectations that God will hear and answer his call. Beloved, I hope something was said today that will bless and encourage and inspire you to run on a little bit longer to see what the end might be. Our homework assignment is to read Psalms 29, 30, 31, and 32 for next week. Psalms 29, 30, 31, and 32 for next week. As we are beginning to read this, I pray that you are allowing his word to dwell richly in you. Always remember, beloved, what can I do today to help someone else? It's not about us, but it's all about blessing someone else. Amen? So ask the Lord, Lord, put in my spirit, what can I do? And as I always say, it might be just give someone a smile. 
It might be to give someone an elbow since we can't shake hands right now. It might be to blow someone a kiss since we are not able to physically kiss. It might be just to tell them, hold on, that the Lord is still in control. So through a kind word or helping deed, or if there's something else you can do to bless them, just remember to bless somebody. May God bless you. May his peace be upon you.